Today we venture into the cold, dark vacuum of space. To play with Legos! And we're gonna figure out what ISO is and how to use it to create stunning photos straight out of camera. But first, it's time to build. So to start off, what is ISO? Well, it's one of the three fundamental components that controls the brightness of your image. Aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. So aperture and shutter speed are both physical. Aperture controls the size of the opening in your lens that lets light through. And your shutter speed determines how long your sensor is going to be exposed to light. ISO is a little bit different. This is a computer thing. So we're talking about modern digital cameras. There's a computer inside of your camera. Now what the computer can do is take the information that's captured with your aperture and your shutter speed and it can brighten up that photo. It's kind of like post-production inside of your camera. So your ISO values are displayed as whole numbers and most cameras will start at ISO 100. Now, if you wanna double the amount of light on your image, you also just double the ISO number. So going from 100 to 200 in ISO will double the brightness of your image. 200 to 400 will double that again. But it does come at a cost. When you increase your ISO, you also lower the quality of your image. And here's why. Let's compare a camera to a microphone. Now, imagine you're trying to make a recording of something that's very, very quiet. Luke, I am your father. Now, if we want this to be louder, we're gonna have to increase the levels of the microphone. Luke, I am your father. This is gonna start to bring in ambient noise and electronic noise from the microphone. And as we go even louder, the amount of noise continues to get worse. Luke, I am your father. So the same thing is true with your camera. If you take a picture that isn't very bright and you wanna make it brighter with your ISO, you're also gonna to start to see signal noise, also known as grain. You're also gonna notice that your colors are not rendering properly and you're gonna lower the dynamic range of your camera. Now to keep your image quality as clean as possible, you'll wanna shoot with your camera's native ISO. Now for most cameras, this is gonna be 100 or 200, but go ahead and Google your camera model, type in native ISO, and you can figure out the native ISO for your specific camera. I have you now. Now for most modern digital cameras, an ISO range between 100 and 400 will produce almost no noise. Going from 800 to 1600 will start to introduce a little bit of noise, but should be usable in most situations. And anything above ISO 1600, noise is going to become a factor here. So if raising your ISO will degrade your image quality, why would you ever want to do that? Don't underestimate the power of the ISO. Changing your aperture and shutter speed are both creative decisions you can make as an image maker. Changing your aperture will make more or less in focus in your image, and changing your shutter speed will either freeze an object or allow some motion blur. But there are situations when you don't have enough light in the environment to create the exposure you need with the settings you want with just your aperture and your shutter speed. That's when it's time to bring in your ISO to help brighten up that image. So let's take a look at our example shoot. We wanted to photograph this TIE fighter with a black background. So we put up a black piece of seamless paper, punched a bunch of holes into it, and then shined a light coming from the back. And that made stars. So because this scene is so dark, without adjusting our ISO, basically we had to shoot with a wide open aperture and a long shutter speed. So let's tackle these issues one at a time. Motion blur happens when something is moving around in your frame. It's either the object moving or the camera moving itself. Now you can use a faster shutter speed, which will help you freeze motion. So we made this shutter speed faster, but this also lets less light into the camera. So in order to get a proper exposure, we had to increase our ISO. So we brought our ISO up to 1600. Now this got us a proper exposure, but we still have another problem. Our depth of field is really shallow because we're shooting in an aperture of f2.8. 
Now the shallow depth of field in this case means the TIE fighter is not going to be totally in focus. So obviously we wanted everything to be in focus. To get a larger depth of field, you want to close down your aperture, moving from let's say f2.8 to f8 or f11. So by raising our ISO levels, we're able to use a faster shutter speed, which eliminates motion blur. We're also able to use a smaller aperture, which gives us a wider depth of field. All this comes together, our entire TIE Fighter is in focus, we don't have any motion blur, and we're good to go. Impressive. So the lasers that are coming out of the bottom of the TIE Fighter, these are basically just strips of green light. And in order to make this look realistic, we actually wanted to use green lights below our TIE Fighter. And in the end, we came up with a little bit of a compromise with our camera settings. We used a little bit longer of a shutter speed, but because nothing was really moving in the scene, we were still able to get a great exposure and not use a very high ISO. And of course, we're making a Photoshop tutorial on bringing all these different photos together to create our composite TIE Fighter photo. So keep an eye out for that tutorial. Do it. Now, when it comes to ISO and noise performance, obviously we want the cleanest image possible, but that doesn't mean you should shoot with a low ISO if it means your subject is going to be blurry or out of focus, because those things are gonna result in a worse image than a little bit of grain in your photo. Now, if you're in a situation and you just can't avoid using a really high ISO, try converting your image to black and white in post-production. A little bit of noise can actually come off as a stylized effect and look great in a black and white image. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and learning about ISO. Be sure to check out our other episodes on aperture and shutter speed. Now, if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We'll send you more free tutorials every single week. Thank you so much. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone. Hold on, let's see if I can do this at the camera. Ah! <laughs> did you see it? I did. Can, I, can we reload it? I want to shoot again. <laughs> we got Vader riding on the top of the TIE Fighter! Ah! <laughs> Today, we venture out to the cold. <laughs>